The Globe Finance headlines of the CBC Evening News. The sugar crop hangs in the balance as talks continue. Fish sales down this Easter. And in sports, blackbirds continue to be giant killers taking out St. Barnabas. With the compliments of Globe Finance, those are the headlines of tonight's edition of the Evening News, next on CBC. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. A very good evening to you. I am Pearson Bowen. Stakeholders in the sugar impasse are at this hour still behind closed doors trying to find enough common ground to end the crippling strike at the Port Vale Sugar Factory. Joining us now on the line with the latest is Ryan Broom, who's been following that story. Ryan, good evening. Good evening, Pearson. The end could be in sight for this now eight-day-old sugar worker strike. Labor Minister Dr. Esther byer Siku met at four this afternoon with officials from the Barbados Agricultural Management Company. That meeting lasted about two hours, and then she met separately with Barbados Workers' Union officials in a meeting that lasted about 25 minutes. The minister then left to meet again with the BAMC, and that meeting is still ongoing. While I cannot say it with any certainty at this stage, it is possible that resolution could come tonight. Officials close to the talks on both sides tell me they are quietly optimistic of a settlement. Should that happen, workers at Portville Factory would not be able to immediately resume work tomorrow because of the Good Friday holiday, but sugar officials will no doubt still be keen to get the crop going again as soon as possible. Pearson? It seems like a long night for you, but there are some comments we're told that are attributed to Sir Roy about possible pending layoffs in the private sector. What can you tell us? Well, Pearson, it does appear that more layoffs are coming in the private sector. I spoke to General Secretary of the BW, Sir Roy Trotman, earlier this afternoon, and he tells me that in recent months, the union has been receiving more communication from private employers who say they need to restructure their companies. Sir Roy says the union is seeing far too many cases of companies trying to give the union notification of layoffs on the same day that they are trying to send home workers. He says this is simply not good enough. Pearson? Ryan, thank you. Ryan Broom, they're reporting for us tonight. Tough times for Fisher Folk this year as they experience a major slowdown in sales during what should be a period of high demand. Shane Seeley has more. It appears to be a very busy day here at the Bridgetown Fishing Complex with scores of Barbadians converging here trying to get fish for the long Easter weekend. But the vendors, they're painting a very different picture in fact they're telling me that business is rather slow. They've been explaining the situation. Well, this morning part is slow. I don't know what's going to happen later. But customers coming in slowly. Okay, but I mean, I can see the car park is full. That doesn't necessarily mean they're buying. Some say they're just looking, just coming back later. Them. The customers love fish at 35, 30, 30 to 35 dollars a hundred. You will see probably people buy one come for it. When they are 40 or 45, they still got some people that want loss out, so they will still come and risk a little sales and buy back. A lot of people run from the 45 dollars a hundred, and then you can see them coming. It's slower, it pick, it get a full sales, but not as good as last year. What do you attribute that to? Why is that the case? Well, I feel because it's the laying off of the staff you have, ain't got much money. And even Hazel Morgan, a produce vendor here for the past 16 years, is singing the same tune. T tell me how a typical Easter would be like for you. Well, all know here will be busy. You won't got enough goods to sell. Mm. Like really slow. Vendors have also been telling me why Barbadians have had to pay a little bit more for fish this time around. According to them, fish stocks are down. Since the season begins, yes, catches like dolphin, for instance, it's very slow on a dolphin, but you're getting flan fish, you know, on a moderate basis, and like marlin and swordfish, but benches are mostly lovers of dolphin. But it's a scarce on dolphin, but you will get some. Usually, they will touch over 50,000, but right now, um, one or two people say that they get 30,000 flan fish around this time. My boat coming this morning, and he went out for a short, a short trip. He came in, he only had three tuners and about, no, no, five tuners and he had three dolphins on it and a couple of flying fish, but that was it. And what do Barbadians think about the prices? 
100 ain't really bad, you know. Yeah. That is great for me because when fly fish no coming in, something they sell at like $80, 100 Take more dollars 100 for fly fish. Um, that's, that's good, that's good. That's a good price. That. I don't mind that. I can't tell you about fish price because if I want the fish, I don't care what, what price it is, and I got the money I can buy. It. It's still a bit early in the day, but the vendors are hoping that as the day progresses, Barbadians will make that last minute rush for fish, especially flying fish, even although a bit more pricey this year, going at $45 a hundred. And I'm Shane Seely for CBC News. All right, Shane, thank you. Building a new hospital in Barbados does not mean that government will renege on its financial commitment to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. This has been made clear by Health Minister John Boyce, pledging government's commitment to ensuring that the QEH provides the best health care money can buy. The government of Barbados, of course, has taken a very clear decision, even as we hold discussions with stakeholders, including Senator Fraser, uh, in respect to where we will locate a new hospital. But we have taken the decision to make sure that this facility at Martin Days Road is kept up and running and is delivering the best possible care and is fully equipped. There's no point sitting around and waiting for a decision to be made as to where and when a new hospital will be built because every day is important in the healthiness of our nation. The minister made the comment before unveiling a plaque to signal the official opening of a new cardiac suite at the QEH. There, he also sought to reassure suppliers to the hospital that they will be paid in short order. Meanwhile, the QEH Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Dexter James, has outlined his vision for the provision of cardiovascular services at the hospital. He says the new cardiac suite, located in the Lions Eye Care Center, gives the QEH the capacity to meet population demand with 49 strokes and 11 heart attacks now recorded every month. Almost 50% of those persons who suffer with heart attacks and strokes are diabetics. About 74% also have uh, high blood pressure. The QEH now has on staff two cardiac thoracic surgeons, three invasive cardiologists, and one uh, anesthesiologist specializing in cardiothoracic anesthesia. So we do have in-house the competencies to address the current cardiovascular needs of the population of Barbados and beyond. In other news now, the king has returned home. Current Calypso monarch Ian Webster has rejoined the headliner's Calypso tent. This was announced yesterday during a media briefing at the Hilton Barbados, the new home of the headliners. Webster was formerly with the Cave Shepherd All-Stars, but along with Crystal Cummins Beckles, Smokey Burke, Adrian Clark, and Colin Spencer, the group has removed their names from that role. This now gives headliners the Calypso Monarch, Party Monarch, and Sweet Soka Monarch titles, the Junior Monarch, and the Regional Female Monarch in Cummins Beckles. Webster says he is looking forward to the new season. The only constant in life is change, right? Um, and this is just another chapter in, in Webster's life, in, in Webster's career. Um, and my taste is, is very sweet. I'm still the reigning monarch, and I am going to be looking to defend my crown and defend it stoutly. One of the managers of the tent, Adrian Boo Husbands, says they've incorporated several initiatives, including a pecan competition, Kai Soki, a kind of karaoke only featuring soca, and Thursday Night Limes called Head Limers. The dynamics of crop over have changed again. And as we all know, um, the dinosaurs that think because they didn't change with the times. So Head Limers, once again, is repositioning itself for the new dynamics of crop over. Two young men, one a Barbadian, the other a Trinidadian visitor, have been charged with fraud and remanded to Her Majesty's prison at Dodds. Barbadian Carrie Gibbons, 25 years of no fixed place of abode, appeared in the District A Magistrates Court and was remanded until April the 22nd to appear at the Whole Town Magistrates Court and on May 15th to reappear at the District A Court. 
He faced 19 charges of uttering forged government payment orders, five counts of obtaining money by deception, six counts of theft, and three counts of money laundering. The payment orders were used at two banks and a supermarket. Meantime, the Trinidadian visitor, 27-year-old Joseph Williams, arrived in Barbados on March the 23rd this year and between then and April the 11th, stayed at two hotels and rented a vehicle. Williams left without paying his bills. According to the police, the Trinidadian also took money from three people, promising he would get them work in Britain. Williams was arrested by members of the fraud squad at the Grantley Adams International Airport as he tried to leave the island. The total value of his offenses is $14,813. He pleaded guilty to all charges and was remanded until April the 23rd for sentencing. Government is responding to calls for it to get tough on domestic violence through stiffer legislation. A draft bill on domestic violence has been drawn up and according to Minister of Social Care, Constituency Empowerment and Community Development, Steve Lackett, it is being perused by various stakeholders for comment. This bill seeks to bring our legislation in line with what is currently the best international practices and will go a long way towards the protection of victims and the correction of those that commit such acts. The bill should be sent for the endorsement of Parliament in the very near future. The Minister told a function at the British High Commission to mark the fifth anniversary of the SAVE Foundation that efforts continue to tackle domestic violence through a program aimed at men who are violent towards women. Minister of Labour and Social Security, Senator Dr. S. Tobias Sekou, a former Minister of Family, spoke out against the practice of violence against women and girls, saying it remains a global pandemic. She says recent cases of missing girls and the spate of homicides, femicides, are a cause for concern. Government is moving to establish a market information system for the agriculture sector. Agriculture Minister Dr. David Estwick, in making the disclosure, noted that government could save millions by improving planning and introducing proper procurement systems. We will have the information very soon um, to know what is being produced in Barbados, how much, when it's planted, and when it's going to be harvested. And that information, if managed properly in the ICT setting, on the, we're on the demand side now where you know what the hotels want, what the restaurants want, what the school meal systems want, and so on and so on, and you bring it together in an operational interface, that is critical for us to move agriculture forward in Barbados. And I want to thank the FAO and ICA for their support in this regard. Dr. Estwick says the island has already moved to establish food zones, the second to be set in a few weeks, to raise the level of production. He says they will be linked directly to the market information system. Students of the Samuel Jackman Prescott Polytechnic are acquiring the skills that will allow them to pursue a career as pastry chefs. Their instructor, Winifred Banfield, says for pastry, preparation for the final presentation is key. Her students were required to prepare 12 items to demonstrate their ability to bake some delightful favorites. There were also presentations of local beverages and tropical punches. They have to select the items that they know that they re that are going to be able to be completed within the time that they have. And basically, they usually finish in time. They all finish in time. They may, may go over by five minutes or so, and that might be because something is in the oven or something. But usually they're able to complete within the time. A student, Shanika Howell, who displayed puff pastries, mango cheesecake, and iced cakes, intends to be outstanding in her chosen field. I see myself owning a pastry shop in future or being an executive chef at my own restaurant. 